Today on Media Litter Sandwich, we talk about celebrities we'd like to interview. No, not that one. The ones we want an apology from. Welcome to Media Litter Sandwich. I am Scotty Miley, better known as Toten from Toten.com and YouTube.com slash K. With me is William from AllAboutWilliam.com. And Mark from CrazyMark.com. And today we are talking about, well, who do we want to interview? Like, let's say Ooh. we can interview any celebrity alive. Oh. We're not we're not going back in time. <laughs> oh, we're not going to do a live or dead I, one. I want to bring my TARDIS out on this one. Oh, well. No, because I got some really interesting celebrities that aren't. Some people may look at me like, why do you want to interview that person? Why would you want yeah. them on your show? Yeah. I, those are the people I want to talk about. I want to talk about Kathy Griffin. I would have her on the show. Not here personally, which I highly doubt she would want to come here personally. Highly, highly doubt. But I would talk to her. You know, if it was one of those celebrities, hey, you got, you know, Exactly 10 minutes to talk to this celebrity but, on video conferencing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I would talk to her. Whoa, 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 Tony. There's something we got to take into consideration here. Will Peter allow her on the show? I don't know who Peter is. Oh, anyway, back to Kathy Griffith. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, because of Family Guy. I got you now. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, ha, ha, and... That's Lois. <laughs> um, <laughs> His wife's name's Lois. Uh, anyways, yeah, I would, you know, why not? She talks about, oh, no one's going to hire me now. Oh, I might, you know, what, you know, woe with me. I'm in hireable. I don't know what I'm going to do anymore. Feel sorry for me. Why not come on our show? I want to, I would love to get into her head. For one, I don't know why she's famous. You know, after <laughs> seeing that photo with her with the uh, the dismembered nope. head, and, uh, uh, we're not talking about. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. We know, you know, yeah. After <laughs> yeah. after she did that thing, after seeing that thing, she would definitely be able to get work in the horror film industry. You really think so, though? Because yes. we haven't yeah. heard anything like that. No, but I mean, nobody's now. Looking. Tyra Banks did go that way. Well, sort well, of Sharknado. Yeah, but yeah. still, though, Kathy Griffith has that look about her that's like, psycho! Like uh, Andy Dick after uh, he's been locked in the basement for 20 years? Yeah, maybe like that, yeah. But she's got her own appeal, you know? Like, mm -hmm. what happened to Carrie, like, 40 years later kind of thing. Oh! Ooh. Yes! I maybe who knows? I, I would love to. Mm -hmm. I would love to talk to her. I'd love to actually get her perspective on some things. I'd like to ask her about her social media. Does she, what has you know how what was managed? How she manages? How she managed it now versus then? What she would do different? Um, I I would like to talk about things like that. I'd like to talk about how it's. I don't know. I think that we could come up with some good questions to fill 10 minutes that be interesting. I like that insight. You know, I don't want to ask questions that you could find out in any other interview. I want, I want to know that that extra insider information. I'd like to find out why her social media expert or the person in charge of everything didn't take this all into consideration and say, oh, man, she just lost her job over here, but she'd be fantastic. A lot of comedians don't have that filter, though. In the no, horror film industry. I mean, look what happened to someone that I think is so great. I'd still love to get him on the show. Yeah. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried, which oh. only suffered, uh, which he did do something that was, uh, he made uh, uh, a terrible joke about tragedy, and he got fired from Aflac. Uh, as 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 the voice of the duck, but he you know he has a great podcast. He I'm sure he continues to get work. He's not suffering at all. Uh, um, but yeah, he has no filter. I mean, if you ever read any of his books, I got a couple of his books in my bookshelf over there. Uh, I've been to one of his stand ups and stuff like that. All right, Toad. And well, let me ask you: Did you ever see the celebrity wife swap that he did? 
Yes. Uh, no, dude. Yes. <laughs> was that a hoot or what? <laughs> so, oh, it's a family got, friendly I, I don't show. Think I saw that one. <laughs> it's a good show. It's 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 not what the title makes it sound like. But it was cool. I mean, Gilbert Goffrey was on top of his game the entire time. It was like comedy within yeah, the show. Wow. And, um, it was with um, 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 that other guy who died last year, at least. Yeah. Um, uh, the father from Growing Pains. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I know who you're talking about. I just don't know his name. It's one of those names. It's like, oh, what's his name? He has <laughs> thick, thick, Alan, Alan thick. thick. Yes, oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, Gilbert, man, what a, what a hoot. <laughs> Mark, you had a couple of them. Oh, you're you're all gonna die when I tell you this. It's like you think that crazy Mark would want to interview like Iron Maiden or Slayer or something like that. Well, no, I'd like to interview Taylor Swift. Why? Because look at what she's done with her part of the music industry. I mean, here she comes like years ago. She's just this cutesy girl on the scene and playing country. And now she's a bag of hot mess. And yeah, she's she's all of a sudden she's gone through all these changes, reinventing herself, and pretty much she runs part of the, the recording industry. I mean, what happened? She's a Sagittarian. You know, and I've I've been around them, and those kind of girls are like firing oil with me, like. Shh, well, I heard I her newest he album isn't that good. I hear that she likes to start drama. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure she's a gossip person, it's wonderful, and pretty much any girl in a certain age range would love to interview her as well. Yeah, and there, there's pretty much, you know, she gets all sorts of drama going on between mm -hmm. all the other big girls in the industry and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that's what, what Boost uh, sells, you know, going online and downloading and downloading and getting all those sales coming in from videos Can watched. we talk to her sales manager? Huh. Yeah, her promotions? You know, she also has a hand in that. She She's, does. She is a business savvy person and it's it's like she's more than somebody out there like oh i'm this blonde that does this music she's she's behind the scenes she's a mogul monster with okay. with business you know a lot of people say oh yeah how is she behind the scenes mm -hmm. she's smart very smart and I'd like to get her take on things and find out what she did to overcome, what obstacles to get where she is, because I know she played the game. And she's been playing it like Madonna. I was going to say, you were kind of comparing her to Madonna, because, you know, Madonna runs her, uh, Maverick, right? Yeah, Maverick mm -hmm. Records, yes. Mm -hmm. And and pretty much, if you're in the recording industry, and you're smart enough, you're making those hits, you know it's not going to last forever. So you form your own labels, you manage other artists, you move up in the world in that fashion, and Taylor Swift has done that, just like Madonna. She's almost like modeled herself after Madonna, in a way. As many have, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so... All right, William. William, yeah, who do you I, want to yeah. interview? Come on. You know, it's going to be weird, and I don't know why, but uh, <laughs> uh, um, George Takei. Cause, just, Is it Takei or Takei? One of them. I hear it so, pronounced so many different ways. We can figure out which way it's supposed to be pronounced. <laughs> Though I'm pretty sure. Please let people. us know. Comment, rate, subscribe. <laughs> I, I'm uh, pretty so sure somebody would be like, five minutes on Google, man. You'll find them talking about it. <laughs> so, William, tell us why you, you want to be beamed up. Why, why do you want to? Wrong person. George yeah. Takai? It, it was Scotty that beamed people up, man. Oh, okay. Okay, that's right. Okay, but See anyway. what he's doing now and why he has other people running his uh, like fan pages that's and right. stuff. he does. I yeah. believe uh, his husband runs yeah. some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Because he became, he just had this insurgence uh, on social media. I mean, he, he oh, has yeah. collections out there. I, I had to fo stop following him. He just wasn't funny anymore, though. And I think it was because someone yeah. else was running his stuff and just way too political for me. It hit a point yeah. where he's posting memes that you, whenever you, you post a meme and I go, no, that's not true. It's okay. I mean, how to anger people on the internet? Step one, post an opinion. Step two, wait. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> Troll mask. 
<laughs> so that's okay. But when it's time after time, again and again and yes. again, it does get to the point where it's like, all right, I can't follow you anymore because this just isn't. It's entertainment purposes, and it hits a point where it's no longer ent- entertain me. And I'd rather just hit unfollow than actually get upset like some people do. Oh, too many people get upset over <laughs> stuff like that. Oh, my God, that. I can't believe you said that about that <laughs> one person that did that one thing that one time. I was totally behind <laughs> them. Hey, wait a minute. I'm still subscribed to George Takai on tw- uh, Twitter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. I'm still subscribed to... Um, the other controversial figure, I don't know which one we're talking about. Alex oh, Jones. Everyone's controversial. <laughs> controversial nowadays. That's, yeah. you know, because people won't even touch uh, that one. I can't even think of his name because I never followed him. One YouTuber that just did, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago did that one unspeakable thing. Yeah, uh, He showed um, a corpse uh, in, the, in, the, in the suicidal forest uh, thing. Hmm. And, oh, and I would I wasn't not there. mind, you know, I almost would want him on the show only if I can talk about veterans 22 suicides a day and try to figure out why, you know, try to figure out, you know, I want to talk about that a little bit, but I don't know if it would be too controversial to actually do. In fact, I'm pretty sure this video is going to be marked just because I said that uh, and probably won't have any monetization on YouTube. I realize that's how controversial that is. Controversial. I want to find out if he had any paranormal experiences while he was going about his rigmarole. That that, that sounds right up your alley. That's a good... That's yeah. a good question. But yeah, George Takai. I love the guy. He's a great guy. Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's a great Trek, guy. Yeah, great guy. You're in Star Trek. <laughs> you know, you're in Star Trek. You're great. Fantastic. No questions asked. You know. Well, he's not even really. Most of the people that know him now don't even know him for Star Trek. Well, of course not. He's no. been busy with uh, other stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know who else I want to interview? Cool. I want to interview George W. Bush and not because he was a president. Oh. Ooh. I want to interview him. Because of his uh, book, which I also have in the other room, um, of his paintings. Now, this is the kid, or is this the father with the CIA, or this uh, W? Um, yeah, I, his book is it's all paintings of military figures. Some people he knows, some people that he's right about. I'm not quite sure, but it's very respectful and I would love to talk to him about that. I love, to, you know, and yeah, some stuff about the president, but more or less President C, but more or less I, I want to know about his art and and if it's one of those things where because I'm a celebrity status, I knew that this was going to sell or what. I'd love to talk to him about that. And he has an interviews about his art. Um, nice. I think this podcast would actually be a really good uh, interview for that, even though I don't know how many people would see I'll it. Tell if you, you guys want to see or hear it on this podcast, just Instagram. He doesn't do Twitter, <laughs> but he does Instagram. If you get to interview George W. Bush because of his art, I get to interview Judy the Chimp because of her art. There. Does she sign language? Yes. Okay. We need some celery in here. That would be really cool. <laughs> that would be. Okay. Well, I don't know, Judy. Around. I know there's been other other uh, um, uh, members of the ape family. I don't want to just say monkeys. Uh, <laughs> other members of the ape family that can sign and stuff. That would be very interesting. And and I'd love for you to reunite with your family. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> I'm, sorry. We all I'm sorry. That was mean. Toden, be careful how deep you dig. You don't want to bury your reputation. <laughs> <laughs> That's an actual phrase from First Planet of the Apes movie. And the video version does have a different feel than the audio version. <laughs> kind of bony, isn't it? Yeah, now back with oh. you here, William. <laughs> Who do you want to interview? Back with you. Come on, speak up, William. You know you want to interview with someone. Uh, I don't know who I would want to interview. Well, it being like asking the same questions over and over that... Everybody would ask. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's say Michael Bay was sitting right here. What would you ask him? What would you want to know? You know what? <laughs> let, let me get to the heart of it. What would you want to know? Really, from Michael Bay? <laughs> from Michael Bay. 
What What do you want him to say? Uh, I have no idea. Um, I want an apology, personally. Yeah, exactly. I know what I'd say. Wait, 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 wait. wait. You I... want an apology? Then say it. <laughs> say you want Michael Bay on here because you want to know, <laughs> is he apologetic? <laughs> No, I'd like to find out about how he gets his hands into all these car commercials, you know? Just really? About, just about every really? auto commercial you see on television is actually directed and produced by Michael Bay. You sure? Yes, I, I know. I know about that. I do know about that. I have my sources back at the community college with people who have worked with him. Yeah, at the university, I worked with a well-respected uh, director of car commercials because we are in the Detroit area, and most yeah. of our video work is with car commercials. And it's not one director that directs all four car co well, of companies course not. in Detroit. You'd have to have <laughs> you'd have to have nine lives to be able to Probably cover more all than that. Four car companies, yeah. But he has directed a few. Oh, I'm I'm sure most most yeah. people have worked in. And some parts of the automotive video industry. I mean, I've done work in the automotive industry when I don't want to. <laughs> I, I, we all have. I'm sure have. in some aspect. <laughs> mm, yeah. 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 <laughs> One way or the other. That, that's what happens when you're in the Detroit area. Yeah, it's I mean, kind of a rule. It, whether it's a car show or it's a commercial, or if it's uh, some some part commercial or working with a parts thing. Yeah. It's always something. Autorama. Yeah, Autorama. Oh, that's a yeah. fun one. Yeah. But we're Dream Cruise. <laughs> oh, well, I forgot Woo! about that one. We're Dream Cruise. Dream Cruise, yep. Car shows. Um, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the big North America. One uh, international auto show. So okay, so you're all talking about Michael Bay and George W. Bush. What about? And here's a name you're probably gonna roll your eyes. Markiplier. Why the heck did he do that thank you tour? What? What's the whole consensus? You know, what's what's? The I deal thought it was it? a you're welcome tour. You're welcome. Which, by the way, I hate it when people say that. Hey guys, I made a new video. You're welcome. I hate that. I it makes me unsubscribe, unfollow. <laughs> You're I welcome. don't like it. I, the biggest mistake about that is it doesn't breed interaction because saying you're welcome is assuming you're saying thank you. Why don't you let the person say thank you, especially <laughs> on social media? This means there's no reason to comment at all because I already said you're welcome. Yeah, it's one of those cutoff things, you know, like, I'm royalty. Yeah. I know Markiplier's done s such good stuff. I mean, there's plenty you could talk to him about. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anything you talk to him about that hasn't already been said in interviews. Um, I mean, I've only seen, in person, I've only seen him in passing, why he's literally getting paid to sit on a couch and play video games with random people, which is... Really awesome. It you know, is. Hey, I get paid. I like personally to hate his voice. His games. sound, the sound of his voice travels through walls. I mean, this is nothing against the person himself. Yeah, it just happens to travel through walls very, very well. I thought that was PewDiePie that traveled through walls. <laughs> <laughs> Markiplier's <laughs> voice, uh. definitely. You can hear it a mile away. I don't know why, but it it. Nothing to do with the person, but his voice travels really awfully. Oh, to me. But like I said, what do you want to know about? Him? I want to know where it all started. Why it's just like that quirk of fate. Anybody can. All be you have to do no, is go Google any, his name and Google still how did Markiplier. He's told any, this story over. I've anybody, heard this story. Anybody can be on over a couch and, over again. and play video games over and over again. Yeah, but years from now, you know, they're gonna say what's what? What's about? It? I want to get it from his mouth. You got articles on him saying, yeah, that's why you bring him on the interview. It's because you have it in person, right then and there. I'm it's pretty like, sure some of it in person too, like YouTube videos of people interviewing him. And that question's come up a lot. Yeah, but, see, that's one of the things when I interview people, and I'm sure we talked about this before, I don't want to ask the same interview 
interview questions, other people. That's why a lot of interviews actually don't get views anymore. Because people, especially from uh, YouTubers, because they find always out. ask the same questions. How did you start? If you can collab with any other YouTuber uh, collab, or person, man. who would you want to work with? If you can do, it's the same questions. I, I find do not out like asking questions that you can find out by a Wikipedia search. What food he was eating before he had the epiphany. Epiphany of what? Do what everyone else is doing? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You know, anybody can do what anybody I'm else sorry, is doing. I'm, not, I'm trying okay. not to insult the man. It's I'm a mark of fate. He got lucky and he yes, knows he it. Yes, he did. He got lucky. He, he, he does very well and it's great. But it's like, what were you doing when you got the epiphany to start yeah. a podcast about talking about what makes you guys geek out? It's not original. This podcast is not original. Just so but happens find out, we yeah, geek you, out about different things, and we're not talking about the exact same things everyone else is. At least I hope we're not. Because sometimes they might be <laughs> drinking beer, you know? What kind of beer were you drinking before That's you got this up every company? podcast. Okay, so what's another celebrity you like to talk to, Mark? Another celebrity. Let me think about that here. Let's go back to William. Come on, William. William's going to sit there and talk about, okay, let's go talk to, uh, let's, let's think. How about, uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to get that name, the guy that directed that other Star Trek movie. Um, J.J. Abrams? Yeah, I want to, I want to interview with J.J. Abrams <laughs> and find out where he got that idea for the Super 8 movie. But that's another subject altogether. I want altogether. to talk to J.J. Abrams mm. with Michael Bay in the same room. Because uh, they both owe me apologies. The, I need to interrogate him about where the heck he got the bright idea for all those lens flares. Just too many. <laughs> it's just too he many. He said it happened by accident. <laughs> it's and an app. Kept, and he kept uh, going after it. It's an app. Okay. Huh. You know, I mean. But still. Oh, yeah. Too much. Too, I want to know where did he get his Star Trek knowledge? And what made him think he can make Star Trek movies? I know people are like, oh, no, he was so great. No, no. No, no. He uh, wasn't. No. Feel free to tell me your comments. It's cool. We can talk about it. And I can tell you why you're wrong. J.J. Abrams my, is a hack. My friend Rich gets on, you know, we, this is a continued argument I have. He thinks the Abrams movies are better than all the other Star Trek things out there, yeah. which, of course, he's wrong. Of um, course. I've seen some great fan Hopefully films. Hopefully you point it out all the time. There are so many fan films. There are. For Star Trek, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, so many. So many. That's why I don't... I, we, Wait, I, I was going to say that's why we don't interview any of the directors on the show, but we oh, have. have. We have interviewed a Star Trek fan film director on the show. Mm -hmm. So, Celebrity, celebrity. I'm still thinking, but let's let's go music. How about Richie Blackmore? I want Richie Blackmore. I don't Blackmore. know who that is. Richie Blackmore. Okay, every guitarist who's ever picked up a guitar and started to learn something, they, they go, Richie Blackmore. He created that riff, that chord uh, combination. And he was a friend on MySpace, you know? We, we actually communicate back and forth. How you know is like the photos and stuff like that. Hey, he actually gave me some information that you'd have to find out by digging and digging back into 60s literature and mm -hmm. stuff. But honestly, I'd like to get an interview with him and find out, hey, give us, let's go over the, like your music and what inspired you to do this and what happened. What were you eating at the time? Did you have any paranormal experiences? You know, yeah. if I could interview a celebrity, just, you know, now that I'm on the what were you thinking yeah. uh, mind frame, I would like to talk to Ricky Lake. Because mm. her, I don't know if she still has a show on TV, but I know when she was trying to make that comeback or made that comeback, I don't know. It was solely focused on women audiences, on a female audience. Wasn't she and in that movie Hairspray? So, and it was so much so... Where they're like, oh, she's known for responding back to people on Twitter. So I tried. And eventually, so, uh, one of her management team reached out to me uh, on Facebook and Twitter because they saw me keep trying to reach out to her, mm -hmm. um, you know, commenting and stuff. She's like, they said, hey, just so you know, Ricky Lake will never respond mm -hmm. to you because you are not in her demographics. 
<laughs> oh, what? No, wait a minute. Wasn't wow. Like, wasn't she in that movie Hairspray years ago? I believe so. The Ricky original. Um, with or, Divine. The older, the older version. I don't know if it was the original version. Yeah, it is. John Waters. Okay, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She lost a lot of weight since then. Well, I'll tell you what. If you're green with, uh, was that culture from another planet? Fine. Come on. And <laughs> I'll, I'll interview you. I don't, I don't care. Let's set religion aside. And, and no matter what culture you're from, let's do the interview. That's it's all good. I would say I, I want to interview General Mattis, but let's face it. It will be uh, 15, 20 minutes me going, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. General Mattis. We're not worthy. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and General Mantis, so- by the way, is the Secretary of Defense. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, and Marine Corps veteran, General in the Marine Corps. General Mantis. Uh, General Mantis sounds like uh, a character from one of those uh, hardcore movies like uh, G.I. Joe and Cobra and Hydra. And General the- Mantis is a hardcore G.I. Joe movie. <laughs> He's the one that says, always be polite with everyone you meet and have a plan how to kill them. Or no, everybody you meet, be polite, be, be patient, respect. be respectful, and have a plan on how to kill them. There you go. It sounds exactly like a mantra from Cobra. You know? G.I. Joe, man. Yeah. G.I. Joe. Joe, not Cobra, man. He is one of the good guys. Right uh, on. <laughs> you know how many people wish he would run for president? He's fantastic. Probably a lot. He is, he is whatever you want to say about our current administration, all the people uh, that's currently in the White House under the, the Trump administration, Mattis is the one person and his whole administration underneath him, you know, all his employees, I don't don't have anything. They try to they try to trip him up. They tried to like, hey, what about transsexuals in the military? Guess who's in the military? Because <laughs> Mantis is straight up, you know, straight up that doesn't affect their job. We will we will do what we need to do to make sure that it's, you know, to see if it would work. You know, cuz but he, he he's very no one's tripped him up that I know of. So it's true, you can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant. Okay. Oh. What's really cool is as we talk about this stuff, it's one of those things where maybe someone will see this and point us, or we tweet, Dude. or we tweet them. You know, hey, look, we talked about you. Say so we have one, and they respond because uh, I've done this before with with uh, on another podcast with Laura celebrities, and that's. And it got, you know, at the time no. we were able to have a few more producers. Dude, dude, and so dude. they reached out to them. I just had another epiphany. Oh, Chewbacca mom. Yeah. No. no, the no, mask. no. Why do you want to talk to her? <laughs> Why not? Why? No, what would you ask her? I would say, what were you on before you decided to throw on a Chewbacca? She already one, answered one that. Why not a Yoda She already mask? answered that. Yeah. What What was the whole epiphany thing? She already answered yeah, where, that. There was where, no epiphany. Was no yeah, epiphany. Yeah, she where, just where was did it. All these answer? things, every interview she's in, there's only like three questions you can ask her. Only three Why? questions. Why? When? when and how? how? Where and how? There's only one Duh. instance. Oh, yeah, and aftermath, which is who cares where she is right now? She got loads of money and Aww. loads of toys for having fun. Fantastic. Great for I just don't see where you know the interview who else is. had fun doing the same thing, but they made a great big career out of it. Was Barney the dinosaur? And they didn't put on a Chewbacca mask. Was it the same they, they actor put, the whole time? No, I don't think no, so. No, Barney the dinosaur was something almost on the same level. She has her Chewbacca mask, but this one has this. Dinosaur yeah, but we thingy. just said it's yeah. not the same actor. Yeah, not the same diff- actor. We're talking about two different things all together. No, no, I mean, Barney, Barney, Barney yeah. was not played by the same actor throughout oh, no, the no, whole no, thing. No, 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 And we're not talking about the actor. We're talking about the creator, the creator of Barney. You have Chewbacca Mom, which Who is the person the who puts on the mask. Barney? I don't know. I wonder if they created Come another kid show Let us know well. who the heck created Barney. That's our question for the day. The one thing that always bugged me about Barney, and this is another thing that people liked about Barney, what? is the songs. There were already known songs, yeah, and they changed the words. That really bugged me. It's, oh, so that means... That weird. still bugs me, because when you're a kid, I don't know, I don't want to play, like, Knick Knack Paddywhack, and a kid starts singing other lyrics. So then... I you, want them to know the traditional lyrics. So in other words, you don't really like uh, Weird Al Yankovic either. 
No, that's different. That's because, parody. Yeah. yeah, he parodies. He sings with the knowledge that you should know the original yeah. or you probably heard. Barney is after the uh, pre uh, pre kindergarten. Uh, what what's is is that the, the, the preschool preschool? He's after toddlers and preschoolers who have which never heard heard the, the originals. Original. They you know they didn't have years to for it to enable uh-huh. you know. Then we got to find out who the big production was behind the creator of the Barney the Dinosaur thing because they're the ones responsible for saying we like your idea, man, but. We're going to take it in this direction. Oh, oh. I, I know who you want to interview for the read. Yeah. I know I, I know who I want to put in front of Crazy Mark. Maybe I'd have to put a screen so he doesn't attack, though. <laughs> I want to put Tiffany Gore in front of you. Tiffany Gore? Are you talking about the... Uh... The Al chick. Gore's wife. Was it the mom, mothers against music kind of thing? Yeah, whole stickers. Oh yeah, she started the whole. Uh, she was a big oh, censorship. Oh man, yep. she started the that, whole no rock music. That uh, was the downfall attempted, yep. for a lot of yep. bands. Is, you know, she, is she still like uh, uh, on that whole kick? Is she against video know. games and all that now? I don't know because when I hear about being against video games, I hear about that lawyer a lot more. Okay. Because yeah. I remember that that tag actually boosts record sales in some sense. Because, wow, we want to hear these lyrics. Oh, yeah. But it was uh, D. Snyder actually came forth and he said, you know, the reason Twisted Sister went down the tubes is because they apologized for their lyrics. Mm. And rock and roll does not apologize. When you're out there, bleep and bleep and bleep, you know. Rock and roll doesn't apologize. A guitar solo doesn't apologize. When you're out there doing the, you know, put the great big mark around my hand here if I'm holding up, you know, take a choice of any finger. It doesn't apologize. Twisted Sister apologized. Down the toilet it went. So, yeah. Who would you like to interview? Not fight, but legitimately ask questions questions to yeah please comment rate subscribe uh best way to comment to us i think is our facebook page and or group uh media litter sandwich media litter sandwich there i said it slowly so people know what it is say it slowly <laughs> like you're taking a bite of a big sandwich it's big and tasty and juicy yeah like a justin <laughs> beaver song <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. With me is Mark Monster from CrazyMark.com. William from AllAboutWilliam.com. I'm Toad, and you know what? I'm not even gonna say my full name anymore. Just call me Toad or Toadin from Toadin.com, YouTube.com slash Toadin K. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And may, may the, the algorithms, algorithms be in your, your favor. favor.